Well, good day to you. It is December the 17th, 2020, and I hope you're having a great day wherever you happen to be. And hopefully you're getting your Christmas shopping done. (laughs) So even though it's a COVID kind of Christmas, there are those people in your life, such as my (coughs) daughter, who still expect Christmas presents on time. (laughs) You know, so just throwing it out there for you to consider. Now, if this is your first time ever listening to Search for Signs, I do want to thank you and welcome you. We have over 300 videos where we talk about Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. We take a deeper look at who and what Maitreya is and why are the Masters returning now to the everyday world during this tumultuous yet historical time. We tie it into the many miracle signs that are going on all around the world and have been for decades in all walks of life and all religious faiths of those of a religious faith and of those of no religious faith. And what does that mean? Does it mean that the teacher who made a promise to every one of the religious groups is already back here, living in a modern world, speaking on TV, trying to help humanity correct our ills and save our planet? Is that what it means or not? And then we tie it into the current events of the time. There's a lot of really... uh, Wonderful things going on right now, political unrest, you know, economic uncertainty and so forth, unemployment, those kind of things. Of course, the coronavirus. And there's not a lot of hope out there. So hopefully we're a little ray of hope in the in the midst of all the, the troubles that are going on to, with in people's lives and maybe in your life, you know. And then, but most importantly, we talk about the priorities that we think are the most important priorities for humanity based on what Maitreya says, is that... Peace is the most important thing that humanity can create at this time. Now, how do we do that? The path to peace that the teacher has presented to humanity is very simple. Without sharing, there could be no justice. Without justice, there could be no peace. Without peace, there could be no future for humanity. So we have to start looking at it as our survival depends upon whether we can create peace. Because if we don't, there's a very strong likelihood that we won't have life on this planet for much longer. Now, let me take a look, let's take a look at the first and most important part of that statement. Without sharing, there could be no justice. Sharing is beyond isms. Okay, let's get that straight right now. So if you think it's communism or socialism, that's not it. So isms are man-made constructs. Sharing is a principle, a divine principle that transcends all that. Okay, so if you look at a family, for instance, you know, I work, my wife works, we come home, we bring the money together. So we have, you know, a roof over our head, we have clothes, we have food, we get our bills paid and those kind of things to help my daughter out, you know, but we don't charge her any money for it, (laughs) you know, that kind of thing. But yet at the same time, is it really socialism or communism or is it just a way a family should act, right? We are a family. Humanity is one family. We need to start acting like it. And we don't, our structures, our capitalistic structures, our political structures, of course, do not reflect the truth that we are one. That's why the masters are returning now to help us create new structures that support that. Now, if you look at the principle of sharing, especially if you're an American, right, who's deeply embedded in capitalism, uh, the United States actually already did the principle of sharing one time, and the outcome of it was Nothing less than miraculous. Right after World War II, when Europe was decimated by war and the Axis powers were defeated, the United States didn't just let Europe go down the tubes. They tried to help them. Now, rather than just giving them money, okay, or individuals in the United States being asked to give money to other individuals, the Secretary of State at the time under President Truman, George C. Marshall, took an inventory of the excesses that were sitting, wasting away here in the United States. The food, clothing, building products, uh, lumber maybe, steel, concrete, that kind of stuff, that Europe desperately needed and immediately gave it to them freely. It gave them direct aid in terms of food, which of course made the uh, social you know, um, environment much more stable because people weren't fighting each other over food, gave them clothing, 
started to help build or rebuild their homes, rebuild their roads, be, rebuild their bridges, railways, electrical infrastructure, and so forth, to kind of get Europe back on its feet. Once the European, you know, once the European people got back on their feet, they started, of course, creating excesses of their own, which they then turned pay back as payment back to the United States, which boosted the economy of the United States at the time. Rebuilt Europe, re, you know, helped to boost the economy of the United States. So it was a win-win for both sides. Now, here's the thing that I want you to take away from these videos about this, okay? And why the principle of sharing is so important and so crucial for today. If you look at all the divisions in the world, all the nations that don't trust one another, but yet all the problems that are facing humanity right now that we have to tackle as a as one people or not. If not, then we are going right off a cliff, okay? So trust if you look at right after World War II, after the principle of sharing with the, with the Marshall Plan, even though it was done for just a little bit of time, the long-term effect of it is the United States still trusts the Western European nations, and the Western European nations still trust the United States better, better than they do to any other nation on the planet. So it created a peaceful relationship between those groups of nations. Maitreya is advocating that we do this globally. Imagine what would happen if the United States actually trusted Iran or, or North Korea actually trusted the United States and so forth. What would life be like for all of us where we didn't have to worry about, you know, another nation subverting another nation or so forth or attacking another nation, for instance? That is peace in reality, which can happen if we just started with the principle of sharing. So... Jesus said 2,000 years ago, a tree is known by its fruit. Very, very popular uh, teaching of Jesus that everyone's heard at least once in their life, right? The fruit of the tree of sharing is peace. So if what we're doing today is not creating peace, then let's try something different that may, that has already created peace, you know, and see if it works. I mean, it, it's kind of a no-brainer. So that's the most important thing you need to take away from this. Okay, now... Most of the questions that we talk about here on this channel, most of the things that we discuss have to do with the masters, the purposes here, you know, Maitreya's priorities, of course, who and what Maitreya is. But you don't have to believe any of that. The most important thing to take from these videos is that the principle of sharing, we need to start doing something with this. It's key. You know, we need to try to convince our world leaders, our family and friends that this is important because when Maitreya starts to really be more direct with people on TV and his sense of urgency is there, that is going to be what he says that humanity needs to do first. So hopefully that helps. Now, we do have some questions to cover in this video, some comments. Of course, if you have a question you want to talk about, you know, ask me, you know, about my tray of the Masters of Wisdom, feel free. Post your question as a comment. You can email me at searchforsigns at mail.com. You can do that as well. And then in the next video, like this video, I will try my best to answer it. All right. Um, first comment comes from Gypsy Christian. That's kind of a cool name, actually. Uh, Antichrist is a person that embodies the evil entity. Okay. I need to make a YouTube to help people understand these things. Okay. There you go. So if you're interested in who and what the Antichrist is for this person, well, then go to Gypsy Christian and in the future and listen to the videos that they make. So hopefully that helps. All right. Next uh, comments and question come from the same person. Christian, Christians exposing the new world order. I was wondering if you have ever read the book by Constance Cumbie called The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. If you haven't, you really need to read it. She met Benjamin Krem at one time. I also wonder what your plumb line for truth is. Is it your own conscience or just what Benjamin Crumb said? I am a Christian who was saved out of the New Age and shamanistic movements. I opened myself up to very real demonic spirits, and it was only through Jesus Christ that I was delivered. Also, God proves himself through Bible prophecy, and everything he foretold in his word is being fulfilled before our eyes. I also recommend you check out Talbrook of Spiritual Counterfeits Project. He was a follower of Sai Baba and wrote his testimony in the book, Avatar the Night. Thanks, and I am praying for you. Well, whoever wrote this, Christians Exposing the New World Order, thank you for the prayers, and I will pray for you as well. So that means a lot to me when people pray. 
I know what you're praying for me for, and it, but it shows that you have a kind heart and you're a good person. So, you know, there's that's the hope of the world is that we, that, that was, which that within our heart, you're trying to help me. I get it, right? And you're praying for me. So thank you so much. And I'll pray for you as well. So it does mean a lot to me. Now, to get to your questions, I was wondering if you've ever read the book by Constance Gumby called The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. Yes, I have. I read it 25 or so years ago. Didn't really have the ring of truth for me. Now, for those of us who don't know, Constance Kumbi is a uh, Michigan lawyer, worked in government for a while, who has devoted her, alo- her whole life trying to expose not only the dangers of the New Age movement from her point of view, but also to expose Maitreya as the Antichrist and Benjamin Krem as the false prophet, maybe, or something like this. And, uh, you know, I just have a different view of it <laughs> based on my own experiences. So... Um, yes, I have read her book, uh, to say that she met Benjamin Cram at one time. I, you know, I've met Benjamin Cram 30 times probably, or 25 times. And so perhaps my view of Benjamin Cram is a tad bit more spot on than hers because it sometimes takes somebody longer than just meeting him one time to really get a true assessment of the, who the person is, but whatever. Now I say, I'm, I'm only saying this to say there are people who, will comment very angrily. I'm not saying you are, but will be very angry and and, uh, in the way that they're responding to a video that I put up based on a title. And they didn't even take the time to listen to the video. So did you listen to the video? Because I actually mentioned Constance Kumbi. So maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I'm not expecting everybody to listen to all the videos that I put up or certainly listen to them all the way through, right? I mean, who would, right? But I do talk about Constance Kumbi from time to time, and I have mentioned that I've read her. But the, the, when I've questioned somebody that, that responds very angrily, and as I'm reading this, I'm going, they didn't even, read what, they didn't even listen to what I said. Because <laughs> you know, everything they're angry about that they thought that I said, based on the fact that they didn't listen to the video, I didn't say. <laughs> and so then when I kind of quiz them on it, like, did you actually listen to the video? Well, no. Well, you might want to listen to it because what you're angry about, I didn't say. And they're like, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but I'm translating this for you back to Benjamin Krem and Maitreya. So the same thing goes for them. A lot of times people just listen to, you know, they just hear one thing that Benjamin Krem says and they, they get totally turned off. And they don't even listen to everything else he says. Or they don't even listen to what Maitreya's written, you know, what was written down, what Maitreya said through his associate and through um, Benjamin Krem, especially his priorities. So I found in my life, the older I get, a truism of humanity, of hu- of human nature, I guess is a better way of saying it, is when somebody is very fundamental in their view of something. If somebody says something to them that is this slight is slightly off of what they believe, they totally stop listening to them. I don't want to hear it. And it, I, I have it with coworkers. I've had it with with people with political discussions. You know, I've seen it on TV when people are arguing political, you know, differences and so forth. You know, even when it comes to capitalism versus socialism, you know, the environment versus commercialization and so forth. I mean, it, the, the list goes on and on and on and on and on, right? So myself, you know, you, it might be a, it might come as some surprise to you that I actually enjoy going to First Baptist Church of Atlanta, whose minister, uh, Reverend Charles Stanley, is a very, very fundamentalist Christian. But yet I can sit there and listen to him, even though I don't agree with everything he says, especially about his view of God and about Christ and about creationism and so forth and his political view. But I can still listen to him and pull from something of what he says and have it apply to my life and change my life <laughs> and walk away feeling great about the, about, about the sermon and never once getting upset about the fact that this guy does not believe what I believe. And it always amazes me when people are so reactionary to everything. And like I said, I'm not pointing a finger at you, whoever wrote, you know, Christians exposing the New World Order. But it's a, it's a hu- fundamental human nature to, to do this, right? Now, to get to your questions, um, and, and say, oh, and the other thing. And if I try to convince you of my view of this, right, which I have a different view than Constance Kumbi. I would be just as guilty as Constance Kumbi is. But Constance Kumbi, where I think she's doing a disservice to people, she's not presenting her side of it just for people to listen and read. And she's saying very seriously, if you don't believe what she believes, you're going to hell, right? Well, I've never once said that. 
I'm just presenting, you know, I, I, I present this information just like Benjamin Krem did, or I try to do it how he did it, is present it for you, for, for you to think about, right? I really, honestly, if you could get into my head and really understand my intentions of doing these videos, I not only don't even expect people to believe this, I don't really even want them to believe it. If, and that sounds kind of odd, right? I'm just presenting this to you for you. If you do something with it, or you believe it and do something with it, that's great. And that's great for you. Not for me, for you. If you listen to this information or are totally turned off by it and don't do anything with it, that's great. And that's great for you. It means nothing to me. So, I, you know what I'm saying? So it's really all up to you, right? I, I consider myself to be an ordinary person with extraordinary information. That's it. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to sell anybody on anything. I'm not trying to convince anybody like Constance Kumi. I couldn't imagine trying to convince people of something like this. That's, that's for, I, would, I would be stressed out, right? So I disagree with Constance Kumi, and she would disagree with me, right? And she probably thinks I'm totally deceived and going to hell, right? But that's her belief. I know it's not true, but whatever, right? Now, my plumb line for truth has always been, do I have a heartfelt response for something? Now, when I first read read Benjamin Krem's book, My Trade's Mission, Volume 2, I didn't just automatically agree with it. I was totally turned off by it. I thought he sounded very arrogant. You know, in my mind, you know, the voice in my head as I was reading his responses, it sounded almost like he was talking down to people a little bit. But I met Benjamin Krem, not once, not twice, not thrice, <laughs> not twice. You know, I met him almost 30 times over the course of my life. Sat down with him, talked with him, spent hours with him in the car as I was driving him around Atlanta. Helped him put on lectures when he came here to Atlanta a couple times. You know, met, you know, set, you know, talked with him in social situations and so forth. Saw him give lectures and those kind of things. You know, and I changed my view of him and realized that he's not an arrogant, self-centered person. Now, to say that I just agree with everything. No, I know that's not what you're saying. Maybe you are saying, maybe you aren't. But just what Benjamin Krim said. If you could go back to those interactions that I had with him, I didn't agree with everything that he said, and I told him. And he certainly didn't agree with everything that I said. And there were times that he said things about me that I walked away going, that little mean, shitty old man. I mean, and, and I was pissed about it, and I held on to it for years. But I still listened to him. I still trusted what he had to say. But there was things that he said that really, mm. but in time, the older I get, the wiser I get toward you know, looking at myself and so forth. And I have a different perspective on what he said. And what he said actually was true. But it took me years to get to that point. And, you know, he he was a very, very loving person. But he had tough love. He was a tough cookie. He was not a soft, you know, kind of gentle person. He didn't pull punches a lot of times. But a lot of times he did. I would see him interact with some of the most... Diso, you know, most delusioned people that were so self-centered and so forth, but yet he would treat them with very kid, he would treat them with kid gloves sometimes. Other people, he would punch them right in the face verbally, right? So it's just what they needed. He, his teaching was very flexible. You know, he didn't, he wasn't a one teacher, you know, fits all kind of person. It's what the person needed. And what I needed apparently was a pop over the head a few times. And, but it, it was uncomfortable, right? So, but yes, that's my plumb line for truth. And then if you were to look at, and I'm, I'm in danger of sounding defensive when I say this, but I've had experiences with Maitreya that lead me to believe that there's a lot of truth to what he's saying about Maitreya, but it's not important to me. I mean, those are, those are experiences that have helped solidify my own faith in these experiences, right? But the most important thing that I look at in this information is the need for peace. I want a future for my child and I want a future for my child's child and, and so forth and so forth and so forth. I don't believe the world is going to end when Jesus comes back. I never have. That is, to, in my mind, is an illusion that Christians have. So they're waiting. They can't wait for the world to end. What if you're wrong? What if the world isn't supposed to end? What if that's just a symbol for the end of a age, and it, but yet there's a beginning age coming, and you're waiting for the world to end, and you're not helping anybody else out, and you're not helping eliminate the evil of hunger and starvation? What if it's your job here on this planet to do it? You know, I can't imagine 
Jesus or God or anybody just sitting back idly on their hands and doing nothing while people are suffering. Jesus was an example of helping to end suffering. Why not do it today? Right? I'm just throwing it out there too. But anyway, um, now in terms of your opinion of the New Age movement, I, I, with the exception of demonic spirits, I, I agree with it. I think that most of what people talk about when it comes to the quote unquote New Age movement is a bunch of garbage. That's why I don't really, it doesn't have the ring of truth for me. People bring up people all the time. Do you know this person? Have you read this book? Have you did? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What about this person who claims to channel this master or claims to channel my trio? No, there's not a lot of truth to it for me. I don't make great strides in telling them how wrong they are for thinking that, but I just, no, it's not, it's not for me. What has the ring of truth for me is listening to Benjamin Krem speak about Maitreya and also reading Benjamin Krem's master's articles definitely has a ring of truth for me because there's a lot of truth to it. But, you know, but that everyone has to come up on that information and that truth for themselves at some point. Now, it's not also not for me to try to convince you of that. Just, you know, be a Christian. But be a Christian, be a fundamentalist Christian who wants peace. Be a fundamentalist Christian who wants to end hunger. Why not? And if you're right, and the world does end, and Jesus comes back, well then, shoot, you've saved people and, and helped save the suffering of your fellow brothers and sisters. Now, I challenge you to think about this, and this is something for anybody that's a fundamentalist Christian, is have you ever been face-to-face -face with poverty? Like abject poverty. I'm not talking about poor here in the United States. I'm talking about abject poverty. Somebody who has zero, nothing, nada. Maybe even starving. And if they're starving to death even, imagine, just if you can, just in your mind, trying to convince somebody to be a Christian at that moment in time. Is it going to work? Or even talking about Jesus. Is that going to help them? I don't even think they're going to listen to you. But if you had a little bit of food and you gave them a little bit of your food to them to eat, they would view you as an angel come down from heaven. So Maitreya says you can't talk about God. You can't show somebody what God is when they're dying of hunger. They, they won't hear you. So anyway, just something to think about. But yes, I, I, I can see where you're coming from with the New Age movement. <laughs> now, lastly, I do want to say this. There, you know, you talked about my plumb line of truth. I'm going to swing back up to that. Okay. When I've had experiences with Maitreya and I talk about them, I know they happened. And so, for instance, there's a, I'll give you an example. Back in February, I was working on the side of my house and I was up on a very tall ladder and I, the ladder started to tilt and fall and I went right toward the, the concrete driveway. I was headed nearly head first toward it. Can you imagine? Now, at the minimum, I would have been bumped, bruised, and cut. On the other extreme, which is a very like, you know, strong likelihood, I could have died. And anything in between, I could have been paralyzed from the neck down to, you know, have a broken arm to being blood, you know. But as I was falling, I was cussing. I'm sorry I was. I can, you know, I can admit when I did something. <laughs> But the only thing I could call out to was Maitreya. By the, and that's all the time I had. I started cussing as it, was, as it was falling. And once I fell, I, the only thing I could think of was Maitreya. And I went, Maitreya. And I called him out. And I, 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 mean, I, I yelled out Maitreya. And then once I did, I very slowly, very gently got laid on the, on the concrete. Like a baby being laid into the, into the cradle. I laid there for a minute in disbelief of what happened. I didn't even scuff my jeans up. And I was like, oh my God, what just happened here? And then I got up. There was nobody around to prove it or verify it. I have no video of it. I wasn't taking a selfie as it happened. Nothing. This is for me, right? You can believe it or not, but it did happen. So when I share this information with people about these experiences that are sometimes crazy experiences with these masters, in my mind, they prove his existence as being the one awaited by all the world's religions. But don't think for one second that there are times in my life when I'm driving down the street and I'm by myself and I think about that and I go, are you nuts? Did that even happen? And then I go, yeah, it did. It happened. But I can't imagine how crazy it sounds to people who have no reference to this. So, but yet, in my own conscience, in my own experience, they did happen. So, 
Like that person who was talking about, he wants to start a YouTube channel about the Antichrist. Whatever. <laughs> I'm saying, this channel talks about my experiences and it relates it back to what's going on and those kind of things because there's, you know, that's my view of it. you right. So, but don't think for, like I said, don't think for one second. There, there are moments in my life when I think about the experiences that I had with my trade that are so out of this world almost that I go, wow, did that even happen? Did I fall off a ladder and nothing happened to me? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I mean, it, but it's just, anyway. And it's not just because Benjamin Krem said something to me. Now, when I talk about Benjamin Krem, and I say, well, according to Benjamin Krem, or according to Benjamin Krem's master, I'm citing him, so I'm not plagiarizing him. But I'm, I'm still just presenting that information for people to look at and think about for themselves, and then come up with the truth for themselves, or not, right? So hopefully this helps. But anyway, thank you very much for asking those questions, uh, Christian exposing the world, New World Order. Did I answer everything? I think I did. But anyway, hopefully this helps, and uh, feel free to ask questions in the future. Uh, thank you so much. And as always, take action. Help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Have a great day.